we're very, very lucky to have this panel here today. And it was great this these panels are already helping our students get jobs already. So it's great. So let me introduce everybody who's here right now. We have uh, Trish Rubin right here, uh, who's a consultant, author, and speaker, and educator. Uh, you have her biography right here. Uh, we have Carl Collage, who's my assistant. When we first started the TV studio, it's upstairs. By the way, for those of you who don't know, the TV studio is originally downstairs where the weight room is now. And actually, I, Carl was one of the people who actually took apart that old studio, of uh, which the cameras did say HD on it, but it's good for heavy duty. <laughs> <laughs> And right next to me over here, we have Jonathan Tillo, a brand marketing expert who's told me I had something on my face before. Thank you, I, I appreciate it. It's the marketing me. man of me. So, and yeah, we're very lucky. And then right next to him is Andrew Slips, who is another former one of my students who's a promotions manager at Turner Sports. And we're really, really lucky to have them all here today. So thanks. Let's give them a round of applause. And right now, I would like to introduce the person who is going to moderate this event, who is pretty much the person who keeps us all on our toes here. So this is uh, another former student of mine, <laughs> Lauren Bertolotti. We have a, a bunch of questions to go through. I'm going to start right ahead. Um, so I'll start with Trish with the first question. Um, but before we do that, thank you each and every one of you for coming today. I appreciate it. Um, so Trish, describe a typical work day. Oh my. It's, it, uh. So um, I'll tell you just very quickly, a typical work day for me is um, recently getting up in the morning and watching something called the Philly Special. The Philly Special is the play that um, was done in the Super Bowl by my team that won, the Eagles. And so now I start the day with the Philly Special. If you haven't seen it, you've got to see it. It's a great play. It just shows you absolute surprise, absolute uniqueness, energy, calm in the face of great adversity, and I, I do that. So my typical day always starts with something that gets me excited, and recently it's been the Philly special. But I don't have a typical day. Uh, Baruch College uh, tries to make me have a typical day by making me appear in classes uh, a few days a week. But even at that, it's not typical in my class. My job is really um, to get beyond typical every day. And as uh, Seth Godin, great marketer, says, uh, become remarkable. So when you get up tomorrow, if you haven't done this already, try to find something that will excite you, a platform, a visual, and get that going, and know when you're looking at that, it's making you somebody less than typical. So go from typical to remarkable. So anything can happen in my day, and I like it that way. A uh, typical work day for me is um, I work with high school students, so juniors and seniors. And you can, high school, they listen, they don't listen, but uh, they have a TV studio at the high school, so I'm, in, I'm the director of the TV studio. So as opposed to having regular morning announcements that are read right over a PA system in a regular high school, they have a 13-minute program that I direct. So um, the students go on to give announcements about sports, activities, and you have administration giving announcements too. Um, if we have any commercials I produce, um, and then after that, I teach two classes of, um, it could be video broadcasting, communication arts, or fundamentals in speech. Uh, those are high school electives that the students take. And then throughout the day, if students need help with any form of videos, um, if the school needs any videos, I'm in charge of that also. And I'm also their social media director, so anything on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram that needs to go up for the school, I get emails consistently all day to post those. And then um, after school, I run the clubs. So after school, you have the video broadcasting club, which I run with the students. You also have the newspaper club, the radio club, culinary club, yearbook. So it's a fun packed day. And then two days a week, I'm here at St. Francis um, teaching video broadcasting, uh, television studio production, or fundamentals of speech. Well, 
if you would have asked me what I my typical day was uh, five years ago, it's very, very different than it is today. Uh, today, I first thing I do is uh, get up and stretch for 20 minutes, which is very, very important to get the juices going. And then the second thing I do is um, go to social media and on my Twitter account, what I like you all to do is to follow me on Twitter. And if you don't follow me on Twitter or you don't have a Twitter account, you should all do that because that's the future. And um, what I do is a meme each day. And what I do is a go brand yourself meme. Uh, and today, which was appropriate, is um, um, do something for someone nice because you may be the only person that is doing that for that person. And um, so after I got that going, I, um, I engage in a, um, an article that I might want to write for, this, for the, this given week. And this week I'm going to think about um, writing about Elon Musk and um, what a uh, great brand he is and what a great promoter he is, and whether or not he's a great promoter or a great scientist, you'll have to make that decision after I lay that out. And um, the secret is, um, in all my writing these days, is to apply the rules of personal branding and marketing so that people can help go brand themselves. And what does that mean? It basically means that what is the unique characteristic that you can give other people. So it's, marketing is not about selling. It's about satisfying the needs of others. Of all the, market, of all the business disciplines, marketing is the most interpersonal because it worries about the other person. So that if you're going on a job interview, you should worry about how much money I'm going to make. It's what is my interviewer want from me and how am I best going to satisfy their needs or their hire me. And so that's kind of what I do these days. And when I'm not on uh, radio being interviewed or on TV giving my take on uh, all things marketing-wise, like Elon Musk. I, um, I like to go to the gym whenever I can and uh, come to conferences like this so I can help people to go brand themselves. So that's a little bit about what I do. You're welcome. Yeah, so uh, typical work day for me. Hmm. It's, it's, there's no two days that are the same, and that's so, that's so like cliche to say, but it's true. Um, so just to give you a little background uh, as to you know what I do. So I work on the Turner Sports uh, promotions, marketing, sales team. So essentially, our group kind of uh, we help ideate and execute sponsorship ideas for advertisers. So whether that advertiser is an official marketing partner of a, a sport that we work on. Um, so I specifically work on NBA, uh, NBA Digital specifically. Um, you know, so you'll have your Kia, State Farm, those you know heavy-duty advertisers that are you know the official whatever of the NBA. Um, so when we have some type of sales request that comes in, um, we'll take a look at it, see how much you know money we're working with, see the time frame, see you know the audience that our advertiser wants to hit, um, and then we go back and we kind of figure out what's the best for this uh, for this advertiser in particular. Um, so this is where we'll work with, you know, our editorial team, our social team, our video team on helping, on figuring out rather, um, what makes the most sense for this client. So for example, you know, uh, Kia, they, you know, they own everything preseason. So we put together a package for them that included, you know, social media across our, you know, Turner Broadcasting uh, NBA channels, so that's NBA TV, NBA on TNT. Um, we did a video series with our, you know, content producers that sit in Atlanta. Um, so that, you know, organizing all those calls, figuring out, okay, uh, we have this type of branding, what makes the most sense 
you know, for this type of content. So basically, um, you know, connecting that, uh, making that connection between the advertiser and the content that we're putting together. Um, and on top of that, so I manage a team of, of two coordinators and I have a director that's uh, above me. So we kind of just have catch-up meetings each day, um, see what's trending, see you know what new social uh, technologies are out there, um, see how you know any any changes. So like Facebook's new algorithm that you know was recently released, you know that will affect my day to day. So it's you know keeping up with those types of trends um, and organizing uh, meetings with our sales groups to figure out exactly you know what advertisers are coming in and how can we best uh, support them. Trish, um, what aspect of your job do you find most rewarding? Since I create my own work, I mean, it, it the, the thing that uh, I think I could say, say to you is that uh, if you get yourself in that position, even if you're working for a company and you want to create, you want to create your own passion. And so, what is rewarding um, for me is at this point in my life, after having a long career in education and having middle schoolers as my captive audience, typical day for me back then was very different from what I'm doing now, but is knowing that, uh, that, that I have something to say that um, has value, and so finding something that you're passionate about and uh, using that as a way for you to continue to sustain yourself as a um, someone who maybe ha will have your own business or even be in a business is so important. So I think what is um, rewarding is what individually, once you understand who you are and what makes you happy and what you have to give, then it then that's the reward, then you find it. You look strategically for where you need to be. So right now for me, what is rewarding is having something of value that I can say to people that somehow resonates with them and they can learn or they can become empowered or they can reach something that they wanted to have. So I'm very lucky for that. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm old, right? <laughs> I always said this to my students, like, I'm old, speak up, I can't hear you. But what, what it means is I've had a lot of experience, but you can do it too without that experience. Just, you know, you, what gives you the reward is really understanding who you are and what you want. And then opening up uh, all those ways that you can to bring it to you. Uh, for me, it's just um, giving back to the students and seeing them succeed, honestly. Um, from my high school students to even my college students, when they go out and they get opportunities because they started, they learn the fundamentals with me in, in my classes. For me, that's rewarding to see a student gaining internships at ESPN or students who are going out to work in LA on shoots. Um, and, then they, and then they coming back and telling me, you know, I learned how to work a basic camera, how to edit in your class. And, so for me, that's the most rewarding part, just to see students going out there and fulfilling their dreams. I mean, I mean, of course, maybe someday I can easily go back out there and work there, but for me right now, it's just giving back to them and teaching them and having them learn and creating opportunities that they're out there and they're achieving um, their goals and their dreams. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I guess making you the best professional you can be, Tom. In other words, teaching you the secrets of uh, making yourself, uh, not only you, okay. I generally have a, I'm generally loud, so I, I, I'm a little scared here. I don't want to frighten the children, right? Um, but um, I guess it's, um, it's uh, providing the encouragement that I don't think I got when I was your age. And I'll say that being the son of a blue collar fruit vegetable fellow, and I really didn't know the rules of 
the white collar world. So a lot of the mistakes uh, I made, I don't want you to make. And, um, you know, if I would have uh, decided to uh, take a job at Pan Am, uh, like my father did, and um, been a union guy, uh, I would have been made. It would have been, I knew, I knew that like the back of my hand. But I decided to do something a little different. I decided to become a psychologist and go where no family member had ever gone before. And so what I can do for students and what I like to do for you is um, get you not to make the mistakes that I've made so that your path is uh, seamless and uh, a good story, a, a, a good book that I want to write that summarizes what I want to say is my mother, uh, the name of the book would be My Mother Said No to Piano Lessons. I was the only five-year-old kid that said to my mother, Mom, I want to take piano lessons. And she said, No, you're not going to take piano lessons. You're going to study math and science, and you're going to do something practical with your life. And, uh, and so what I would like to be able to do is to encourage those people that have dreams uh, to go search for them and go achieve them. Um, so most, most rewarding uh, aspect of my job is when I'm able to, as I mentioned before, work very closely with sales uh, and on the marketing side. So anytime that we're able, uh, you know, whether it be my team or myself, anytime that we're able to find a solution uh, that will essentially drive more revenue for, you know, for Turner or for you know our department uh, specifically, um, that's you know that's a win in, in my book. And you know we, we work a lot with like as I mentioned social before, but we also work with uh, you know, different vendors, so different creative vendors that you know that's it basically is the ads that you see that you know, maybe it's a like a push down on one of your you know on a home page of a website that you love or you know a, a video in a you know a little box on the screen uh, not the annoying ones we try to stay away from that <laughs> <laughs> i can't stress that enough because we have our own uh our own uh, checks and balances when it comes to that stuff like that but you know we work with a lot of different vendors and when we're, when we're able to sell through an idea to a sales team that may otherwise want to go the route that you know they've always gone that's huge because we've now opened a new area of business and um, you know we're essentially making more money for you know for NBA um, you know, but that's you know our goal is not just to make you know make money all the time we have to think about the fan in mind so when a user comes to NBA.com we don't want to steer them away we want them to Come stick around and you know and, and enjoy the content that we have. So I'm gonna ask a couple of questions on preparation for the career path. So Trish, how did you become interested in the communications field? I was a, a kid who hid behind her mother's skirts, like was really afraid. And um, that's part of your journey. So whoever you are when you're five or six, if you can look back and think, okay, am I still that person? You might still be that person inside. You may still have that. So I will say every time I do a, a big presentation and I have to get up in front of 200 or 300 people, I turn into that five-year-old the night before. But um, it, that, that whole idea of finding out who you are and knowing that, I can't tell you, it's, it's so important. And um, knowing that you were that five-year-old, but what were you like when you were 13? And what were you like when you were 18? And I know there's a lot of young people here, so I'll stop at maybe 21. But for me, it's like, what was I like when I was 30 or 40 or 50? It's great to be able to have those things. So, you know, it, for me, it's, it's, and what I can say to you is just do an audit so much about who you are and get down to it as quickly as possible. See your, tra your path. Um, where you came from. If you've taken a psychology course, Jung talks a lot about archetypes, and you may remember doing this in psychology, like, so who are you? Adventurer, caregiver, hero, whatever it is, know yourself. 
And so for me, um, it's just that total um, commitment to always trying to know yourself. And again, I just want to give like as many quick tips as I can for you, because I know you're sitting here and you're thinking of your career trajectory. I'll get down to it immediately and find out the one word that describes who you are. Find that. And then put that out into as many ways as you can. Go from the idea of it to the action. So my word is spark. And I think when I look at this young lady here, she knows it. Okay, and believes in it. Okay, because I love networking and sparking people. So I get it from the woman who, the reason why I'm sitting here is because of this woman who who's came to me and my spark and her spark. So again, you know, it just, the questions here today are great. I just really hope that when you're sitting here looking at the beginning of your career, you have to know that you've got to know yourself so well. And how do you do it? just start digging communications that's the question communicate with yourself first know who you are and get that story out to others uh, it's honestly just turning a hobby into career i mean i loved the nba and sports so i started writing for my school newspaper in high school about sports i started covering sports for the uh, school newspaper so it was one hobby of knowing basketball stats and watching football and baseball into writing sports articles for this paper. And then next thing you know, I became a communication arts major here at St. Francis College. And then I continued to do that, uh, writing articles and working in athletics and then working with um, Professor Gerwitz, Dave, working with Dr. Jackson and continuing to work with sports. And, and then next thing you know, it's turned into video broadcasting and then communication. So honestly, it was just a hobby that I love to do outside of school and I said maybe I may be able to turn that into a career and um, that's the one advice I always tell my students too is just turn a hobby and turn it into a career so I guess sports led me into the whole communications field. Well I guess um, my journey has been um, has taken a number of iterations and I guess I have an expression uh, ABB always be branding and I first started out as a psychologist right here, uh, graduated here in 1973 with a bachelor's degree in psychology. I got my PhD in 1980 from Hofstra University, and I re decided uh, at late in my graduate career, I didn't really want to be a psychologist, and maybe what I would want to do is go into marketing, and so I went into marketing. I started my own uh, marketing services business, and then uh, I had enough of that and I said, you know what, it would be kind of cool to be on TV and give your opinions about things and be on the radio and do all those wonderful, and then write. And so uh, here you go, this kid from Brooklyn uh, has published, uh, has had published over a hundred articles that has generated over millions of viewers and readers of what I've done, and I now write a column for Newsmax called the Marketing and Branding Lens, where I take marketing and branding and apply it to the issues of the day. So whether or not it's the NFL and what's going on there, or Elon Musk, or whatever the contemporary issue is, I use marketing and branding to interpret it. And so what I'm trying to communicate to you is that maybe what it takes is it's not, and I think the data shows this, that today getting a gold watch in one area of expertise is probably not the way to go. It's probably a number of different areas. And I'm proof positive that it can work and never say never or I can't do it because I'm too old or I can't do it because I don't have this. If you want, do it. As Nike says, just do it and you'll achieve it. Um, so when I came to St. Francis, I was undecided, but I had an interest in acting. Um, so I took a bunch of acting classes, but at the same time I was also taking electives. And I had, I had been taking some advertising courses as well. 
So I, I enjoyed acting, thought it was a lot of fun, but I wasn't sure if it'd be something that I'd be passionate about in five years from now, because to me it was more of a hobby. Um, so I, I had taken a few electives, and one course I had taken was, um, was speech, and I enjoyed public speaking. Um, and then I decided, you know what, like, what is, what else is down this path? So I did my research, I looked into different advertising courses, and I said, you know what, this is, this kind of combines my, like, you know, uh, passion for, you know, for business. If I wanted to do something in business, I thought it was, kind of, I thought it was a little safe to go the business route, but I also wanted to stay uh, creative. So I, I decided, okay, my, my goal now is to make ads. I want to be creative and make advertisements. I want to make the advertisements I see on the, you know, at the Super Bowl. Um, as time went on, I said, you know what, maybe this, this isn't for me, but I still want to stay in this path. That's the one thing about communications is that it means it's something different to everybody. Um, and then as, as time went on, I had an internship um, uh, at a you know, small advertising firm in you know, lower Manhattan. And I realized this is what I want to do. I want to market you know, different brands. And then one thing led to another and I ha found an internship uh, at Turner Broadcasting. I worked on the Cartoon Network division for a semester while I was also you know, uh, attending classes here. I realized, okay, this is definitely what I want to do. So it, it took a while you know, for me to get from point A to point B, but you know, as you know, like in, in your position right now, you know, it's it definitely ask questions and definitely think about what you want to do and just kind of plan out how you want to get from where you are, which is point A, to point B, where you want to be. Trish, you want to what do you think is the best academic preparation for the communication profession? Okay, I think out of the box. Recently I've been saying, and I think it's working for me, that to people who are becoming prepared academically, because all the people that I talk to are, are in schools or getting degrees. If you look at um, the flyer, I have, I have letters after my name, Masters of Ar Master of Arts, Master of Public Administration. But I don't have a master's in marketing, but I'm teaching marketing. So what I want you to understand is I think there are three letters that you can add to those wonderful letters that you get that prove to everybody that you're validated in what we all know in marketing is called the micro-tribe, okay, of whatever degree you're getting. You need those letters because you need to be recognized. But I would go heavily into getting DI. Why? What is that? Do it yourself. You are young, you understand how to learn. So you're sitting in classes and you're learning, but the real learning is where you do it yourself. So you have every tool in front of you when you open up that screen. Do it yourself. Find what will make you stand out from all the others in the tribe that you're competing against. And so that would be my counsel to you is keep your awareness up. You have to be so aware of what's going on every single day you know have a good aggregator know what the news is and when you see that news ask yourself what's the story what does it mean and why should I care about this and if you can answer those questions about stories that are coming at you then you'll find some nice do-it-yourself ways for you to stand out so it's really interesting. I got into a PhD program, I never finished it. Do I regret it? Sometimes, because it would be nice to have that say, PhD after it. It's all right. I'm doing it myself. And my mother is a PhD. Actually, she's, <laughs> her initials are PhD. And my mother never graduated from high school. And she made herself a nice career. And she's 93. DIY. Uh, I would say just don't limit the amount of courses that you take and don't limit yourself. Um, 
in terms of, yes, everyone has their focus and their concentration, but even if you are a film and broadcast major or you're a marketing major, there's nothing wrong with taking a business course. There's nothing wrong with taking an ad advertising course if you're a communication, if you're a film and broadcast. There's nothing wrong with stepping outside your comfort zone and learning everything. Because when you do go out into the industry, the more you know, the more marketable you are. So if, if you're a journalism major, taking a few courses in marketing and you know that, there's no harm in, in doing that. So um, the more you know, the more valuable you are, the more valuable asset you are to your company and to who you work for. So as many courses that you can take, go for it. Um, I always encourage students, if you want to do a master's and you have a backup plan, go for that too because there are a lot of things that you'll learn in the master's program you won't necessarily learn in your um, undergraduate program. So the more courses and the more knowledge you know, the more of an asset you are and you become to the company that you work for. Learn as much as you can. And I'm going to say something that is not going to be very popular here, it might come off as negative, but um, if you are in my circles, anybody over 50, the uh, criticism that I have, that I receive from my colleagues about your generation is that you don't think there's history before the year 2000 <laughs> and um, what you got to do is you got to learn about history and uh, my, my um, recommendation is no presidents from Franklin Roosevelt on that would be object phase one <laughs> that's a good start and then after that then you can work back maybe to the, to the 19th century, to the, you know, Teddy Roosevelt's time or McKinley. But the secret is to know as much as you possibly can because you are a communications person. And one of the, the, the I hear this very, very frequently with my television folks, friends of mine, that say that the 20-something-year-old talking heads don't have a history. And I don't want you folks here, my fellow St. Francis College folks, to make that mistake. I want you to be able to differentiate yourself from everybody else and say, we know our history. We know. And we're not just talking from 2000 on. There has been a history, and you have to understand that, because those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. So learn as much as you can, read as much as you can, and absorb information like no one else can. That's my recommendation. Um, you know, you guys are in a unique position, so you have something called time. <laughs> you have the ability to, you know, as, uh, as we were all saying, like, definitely take the time out to ask questions. If you don't, if you don't know something, don't assume it. Just ask, you know, ask the question, you know, how, what, how do you get, you know, like when I first uh, was an intern, I asked maybe a thousand questions a day because you're never going to, you're never going to know how uh, something works if you don't find out how, how it works. Um, rather than asking for the answer, ask how does something work, um, you know, and it, when you got, you know, when you guys are, you know, commuting, download a podcast you may not be familiar with, just, just to try it. If you don't like it after two or three listens, you can delete it. But use this time you have wisely, because right now you don't have a full-time job yet. Um, it gets, it only gets harder as you take, you know, more internships, more courses. Um, and uh, you know, as we were all saying here, you know, there's a course that you're interested in. Just, you know, it might, maybe it's an elective take it because the worst that happens is you get some extra information um, especially if you have to take electives I know in communications you have to take quite a few um, but take something that you know may be outside of your comfort zone um, yeah I, I would just say definitely ask the questions and um, you know make a list of things you'd like to accomplish and then figure out how am I going to get to this position if you want to be a podcaster Figure out, okay, I want to be a podcaster. 
how to, what are the steps in between? Because there's no podcasting school you can go to. Um, you can take courses and how to, you know, maybe there's a course you can take how, you know, how to set up uh, podcasting equipment. Just, I guess, you know, figuring out how to get from point A to point B, as I mentioned before. Uh, but definitely ask tons of questions, especially uh, in the position you guys are in now. Trish, can you please speak about, uh, sorry, can you please speak to how important inter internships are to the professional development in the communications field? Oh, yeah. Um, they're really important. They're very important. <laughs> There's nothing like them. They're hard to find. They're hard to get to. So, um, yeah, it, 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 you, you learn, and, and Andrew, I love what Andrew said, too, about, like, having this uh, opportunity that he had, and he asked a lot of questions. So it's so important that um, you, you move out of your comfort level and get to an internship. It's very hard to do, unless you have somebody great, like you've got a wonderful person here from career <laughs> who can help you um, but this school does I know this school does this and, and does it very well um, they can open the door for you but you have got to be in that chair to be interviewed for that position so don't waste their time I'd say let them they're gonna open the door for you because they're that's what they do uh, make sure that when you're sitting in that chair that you're able to tell your story I'm gonna go back to that again well, if you want an internship, you got to know who you are, and you have to know what you're offering, and you have to make that very clear to people. And you don't uh, you do it by economy of words. I mean, if you're in communication, the value is less is more. We know that. So when I say get down to one word, I mean that. And you know, if you think about a brand, um, you know, Volvo has always lived with the word safety. And that's a classic example. So get to get to that. I mentioned the archetypes before. You know, at three I was hiding behind my mother's skirts, but by the time I was twelve, I was not doing that. I had a lot of confidence at twelve. I was put on a swim team and I did well. And when I got to 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 be twenty year old, and I realized I could write, okay, I, then I changed my confidence. So think of the archetype. I started out, you know, pretty slowly. But then, you know, I became that rebel. I became that explorer. Then I became the caregiver. So use, go to Jung, but have something to say. This school is going to put you in a position, I'm sure. They are investing in you. But please be ready. You know, have your short story of your life right there. And it's not an elevator speech. It's, it's the story of who you are. you got to tell it fast. And uh, as my uh, panelists have said, you've got to be unique about it. But it's DIY. You can do it yourself. Just Google it. I'm sure you can find it. Internships are very important. Uh, I always believe uh, they lead to full-time jobs. And um, my first internship was with Sesame Workshop when I was here. Um, so I was bringing Elmo coffee in meetings. So <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of it, it was it was surreal to, to to be there and do things like that. But they really are really um, they really are important. I had a student here, he graduated in 2014, Phil Bongiorno. And his first internship, what he did was, he was on the train and he saw a guy wearing a Jimmy Fallon hat. And he just walked up to him and said, hey, do, do you work? He just took a chance and said, do you work for Jimmy Fallon? The guy was like, yeah. And, he's, and he gave him his contact and he exchanged it. So be proactive. That person that could possibly give you an internship could be on your train ride home. Mm -hmm. You never know. So, so, true story. So um, honestly, and then my second internship, led to a full-time job. It was with Show of Force, it was a documentary company, I, right after I graduated from here. And I wasn't finding work. And I said, you know what, let me take a chance with another internship as opposed to going for an entry-level position. So I interned with them for two months and then they started the project and I was hired full-time after that. So I'm, I'm always in belief that just as important as academics is, as, as academics are, you should have the experience with internships to back that up and, and apply. There's no shame in applying to like 20 internships a day. There's no, there's no shame in continuing to apply and continuously work. And also, too, um, right after you graduate, just because you're not getting paid the salary or you don't have the, the top-notch job that you want, it's okay to be working for an internship, gaining experience, because you show them that they will hire you. So um, I'm always in favor of students getting internships. 
Well, I guess there's uh, no secret that an internship is important. The only thing that I would like to add is what's the goal of the internship program? What do you want to get out of it? And as I like to say, plan the work and then work the plan. So what I would say is if you want to get a great internship, let's say on Jimmy Fallon, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a director? Do you want to be a comedy writer? What is this internship going to do and get you to the next place or step in life? And a great example of this is about 30 years ago, there was a um, college student who worked for this small uh, TV program called Regis. This morning with Regis Philbin, right? And his name was Gelman. <laughs> and he was an internship at ABC. And uh, he was, uh, it was a producer who had a PhD in psycho psychology who was fired. And uh, he somehow got <laughs> like a acting producer job after being there on weekends and buying Regis coffee and dinners and doing all of that wonderful stuff and working hard. The point is that this guy, Gelman, had a plan. And so what I say is get, if, it's wonderful to get the internship, but if you don't have a plan or what it is you want to achieve from the internship, you may miss the boat, and then you'll, you'll blame that guy Tantillo with the hat and bow tie. Oh, he told me to get an internship. I got an internship, but nothing ever happened of it. Well, that's your fault for not saying to yourself, what is the goal? What are the objectives? What is this internship going to do for me and get me to my next step? So it's important to plan. Um. As I mentioned before, I was an intern at Turner Broadcasting before I started my full-time career. And as everyone's already mentioned, internships are huge. It's basically a college degree. Um, it's a necessity. Um, but just coming from the other side, you know, we recently uh, hired uh, a new coordinator on our on our marketing team, and she was an intern uh, before you know before she joined our group. So she actually worked. Uh, with the with the college sports team, so uh, that's the NCAA side of, of Turner. She worked on, uh, I believe it was it was sales and marketing, but we knew her very well. And I'd like to just give you a rundown of things that she had done during her internship, which ultimately led led, led her to a, a job on our group. You know, she was um, she always asked questions, regardless of what sport she was working on. She sat down with myself talk about MBA. She sat down with one of my counterparts on the uh, Bleacher Report side, sat down with him, had coffee, figured out, you know, networked. Um, and that was, that was, that's one thing. And then another, uh, she was always willing to help. So she knew that she wanted to be in marketing. She knew she wanted our, you know, uh, a spot on our team. Um, and she, you know, went around, figured out, okay, in order for me to get to this marketing uh, group, I have to learn, you know, PowerPoint. I have to learn, you know, how to master you know, these uh, basic programs across, you know, uh, the, the Microsoft Word suite. Um, so she would, you know, constantly be taking, you know, different classes. Um, she also, um, as I mentioned before, offered her help to teams that, you know, she didn't work with on a, a regular basis. She also worked with sales. She put herself in front of sales. So it's, she used the internship as an opportunity to brand herself. Uh, you know, make herself noticed, and when you know when it came time to apply for a position, she applied in our group. She put a project together. It was the best project we had seen out of all of our applicants, and it was a no-brainer. We knew that she was graduating. We waited for her to graduate. The next day, we said, "Okay, come come work for us on our team if you'll, if you'll have us." And of course, she said yes. But it was just one, two, three, um, and we were working with our human resources group on you know, other applicants. And it, it just, it was, we had other interns that were interested, but they did not put the same work into finding a job that she did. And we saw it, it was very clear. So she 
is now working on our group. What industry publication or professional associations would you recommend students to read or join to help keep them informed of developments in the communications field? Trish? You know, as I said before, um, I think you just have to, there are associations, you know, American Marketing Association. I like to read Marketing Week. I like to um, look at, but I, I like to look at news and then dig in and find the marketing and the communication in that. So I, I like look at BuzzFeed. Every single day, there's, there's like a primer for marketing every single day on, a, on, on BuzzFeed. When you when you open up BuzzFeed and you see that the Doritos they think that ladies want to eat Doritos differently than guys, what a what a crazy thing! That's a whole that's a class in marketing, like segmentation and consumer behavior and brand and awareness. So, yeah, um, I think you there um, women there's wise women in uh, sports and uh, eventing. That's a great if you're interested in those things. Um, I think just really uh, you as millennials know that you have to do it yourself for a lot of this. And if you're, uh, we heard the gold watch mentioned by my fellow panelists, no one's giving anybody here a gold watch, okay? Or a pension probably. So just keep your antenna up and find the sources that give you information on a day-to-day -day basis and, and say again, what is the story? What does it mean? Why should I care? And then the people who are writing those stories, go and follow them on LinkedIn. Go and look for them on Twitter and see what, what they're about and who they're about. I'm presenting tomorrow night at Baruch with Scott Kerr, who, was, who is the head of uh, strategy and innovation for a company that was called Time Inc. till about two weeks ago. And I met him on the internet because I liked what he was doing. So I had my antenna up and I went out on Twitter and I liked what he did and liked what he did. And finally he took notice of me. That's three years ago. And now he, he's in the book that I wrote and we present together as colleagues. He, he's so far above me in the stratosphere of marketing. Like I said, I have no degree in it, but I have my antenna up. So that's what you have to do. And I liked what Andrew said about networking too. So you can join com these places and, and network, but, but we are living in a time of time poverty. Time poverty. Where is your time going to be? So I would say be smart. You all know how to use this better than somebody like me. I didn't grow up with the phone in my hand. But um, keep your eye out every single day for what's coming in. Get good aggregators. No. And then keep asking yourself, what does it mean? You know, Bitcoin. Does anybody know about e-currency? E I do cryptocurrency. And why? Because my, I'm always looking for what is going to be important in educating my students. Cryptocurrency is. So do it yourself. Don't go through life with your phone like this if you're not using it to say what's coming across, what does it mean, why should I care about it? Um, I would say one of the biggest websites I use is synopsis.com. They give me um, updated information of what's going on in the, in the industry of the television industry. So they send you emails all the time. Um, I'm sure Professor Goritz and Lauren have told you guys that, but synopsis.com is a big website that it, it just gives you up-to-date information. Um, and as my co panelist said here is do it yourself. Is Don't be afraid to do things yourself and start your own stuff too as well. So if you have... Yes, working for a company is, is ideal and that's what you want to do, but if you have, if you want to write your own script and you want to produce your own film, you want to do that, do it also. Um, marketing yourself and creating your own YouTube channel and having your own followers and having people um, watch your own content is always key too because it goes to show you're assertive, you're, you're a self-starter, and don't be afraid of your dreams. So, yet, yes, it's good to follow these companies, but you can do them yourself too because we, we, we do have the technology. And now with social media, as fast as it's growing, Anyone could have millions of followers with the snap of a finger by just creating content that anyone else can relate to. So never be afraid to start your own quality and content of work. Uh, two organizations 
Number one, the American Marketing Association student member and IABC, International Association of Business Communicators, mm -hmm. become student members of that. Uh, uh, second thing I recommend, you must, absolutely, positively, must be on social media, okay? And uh, you have to look at social media, probably Twitter, to keep yourself uh, what's going on uh, every day. Um, and if I can do it, and I started out with uh, like five, five years ago, uh, I was on Fox and uh, one of the uh, folks got me involved in it, one of the on-air personalities got me involved in it. I didn't think much of it. Maybe five years later, I got up to a thousand and now I hate to tell you how many I have. And one of, the, one of the things I want you to do is I want you to follow me at Marketing Doctor. And if you don't have a Twitter account, open one up. Uh, YouTube, all right? YouTube, no more than two minutes uh, so that you can, in fact, put it on Twitter if you must, if you want to. Uh, content about uh, anything that defines who you are. Go brand yourself. Who are you and what is it that you want other people that are going to hire you? What is your unique benefit to those people that are going to hire you in the months and years to come? So with that, get involved with social media. Uh, I would say LinkedIn is very, very important. Uh, so is Twitter. Facebook, not so much. I don't understand yet Snapchat. I'll leave that to you. Uh, Snapchat skews uh, younger, but you should probably uh, do that as well. Uh, but I would say social media, you have to understand that and use it strategically, not just tactically. And what I mean by that is, why am I sending out this tweet? It's not to make me feel good, it's to make me look good, okay? So keep your opinions to yourself, okay? Because those can get you into trouble. However, if, one, if you want to differentiate yourself, Twitter is a great way of doing it. Yeah, and, uh, I would say definitely if, if, if you have a Facebook, I, I've had a Facebook now for almost, probably 12 years. It's, I can't believe I had a Facebook for 12 years. I recently went through it and deleted a ton of pictures because nobody needs to see me, you know, at a club in 2007. Um, so, so uh, yeah, that will, I would say, and if, if there's just too many, make a professional account on top of your personal account. Cause there was just too many pictures. I had to make a professional account. Um, if you, I mean, because of the industry I'm in, so I follow, um, you know, I, I follow competitors, so you know, ESPN, um, but at the same time, you know, I would, I would definitely follow like Bleacher Report, um, NBA, uh, all channels, so um, NBA on TNT, NBA on ESPN, NBA proper, um, NFL, MLB, um, you know, open yourself up to different podcasts that you may not be, you know, that you may not think you're interested in, but who knows? Uh, I started following or listening to uh, The Ringer, and I originally was on there for NBA and WWE, so I'm a huge wrestling fan and basketball fan. Um, but then I found a few others, a food blog um, or, or a, few, a food podcast. Uh, I think it's called House of Carbs. <laughs> it's really good. Um, a few, like, movie reviews. So they don't all, all don't have to be, you know, uh, uh, in a specific field, it just kind of helps you uh, get a better sense of what else is out there. Um, and I would, you know, definitely try to keep your opinions to yourself, especially if it's on a, you know, professional level. Um, you know, whether whichever way you swing, you know, left, right, uh, Democrat, Republican, um, it's it's tough being, you know, opinionated because you know, there's might be an employer that sees that and says, oh, this is interesting. Why would you know? Why would they post something like this? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's better just to keep yourself out of that situation altogether. Um, yeah. Be careful with social media. Well, this concludes our uh, panel.
and our questions. Um, we do have refreshments off to the side, so please feel free to help yourself. Also, um, these guys are here for you to talk to, so grab a sandwich. Okay.